Good afternoon. I am a postdoc researcher at the Department of Preventive Medicine here at Northwestern University. Our lives are filled with various forms of collaborations, be it working in an office, doing house chores, or conducting research, we constantly collaborate with one another. During collaborations, certain things matter. For instance, the quality of contributions made by others, the type of contributions made by others. But once collaboration is completed, a whole new aspect is surfaced, and that is the recognition of contributions. For me, as an ethics expert, the recognition of contribution is the most fascinating aspect about collaborations, because it says something about values and virtues, such as generosity and humility, or principles like justice and fairness. Before jumping into the details about my research, which is about ethics of collaborations in ethics of recognizing the contributions in academic collaborations, let me warm up the ethical muscles of our brain with a thought experiment. Imagine that we invite three people to help us clean a house. Each of these people is an expert in a specific task. In addition to the hourly fee that we agree to pay them for the job they are doing, we also want to recognize the contribution of one of them who is doing the most important task. Our imaginary characters are not here, but I heard the conversations when they were talking about who should get the ice cream. The first person said, the first person said, well, I drove everyone here. I also cleaned, but in addition to cleaning, I drove everyone here. So without me, no one would be here. There would be no cleaning. So I deserve the ice cream. The second person says, you know, I am doing the most risky task, especially when I'm cleaning the windows from the outside. I'm risking my life. I should get the ice cream. The third person, however, says, I'm doing the most time consuming task. I'm doing the task none of you is willing to do. So I should get the ice cream. I think it's fair to say that each of them is making a valid and rational claim, which makes it very difficult to recognize their contribution with the bonus item that they had in this example, which is the ice cream. It might surprise you, but in a lot of research collaborations and discussions about recognition of contributions, the same lines of argument are used. Research tasks are highly specialized and very different from one another. In order to get a better view of how academic collaborations are recognized, let me give you a closer look into um, these collaborations. For the most part, academic collaborations are recognized by means of becoming an author in journal publications. So, to link it to our previous example, ice cream, journal publication. However, more recently, these collaborations have become extremely more complicated, requiring a lot more researchers to be part of the project, which makes recognition of contributions more complicated because when we have more contributors in a project, tasks become more interdependent and interconnected, meaning that the quality of one task would depend on the quality of all the other tasks. And when, whether, or how a task can be conducted would also depend on all the other tasks. As a result, recognition of contributions has become much more complicated. At this stage, you might be asking, OK, I understand. Research is more complicated. You have to have more people in our projects. But what, does, what is the role of recognition? Why does recognition matter? Recognition matters because in virtue of recognizing contributions, we can clarify who has done what. When we know who has done what, we can clarify who should be credited with for what kind of contributions. We can say, thank you for being an investor. Thank you for leading the project. And we can also hold them responsible and accountable for the quality of the contributions they made. The most recent effort to clarify who has done what in research publications and projects has resulted in the development of so-called contributor roles, which are basically badges that describe research tasks using succinct and precise terminology. For instance, data visualization, investigation, writing. As a result,
thousands of publications nowadays have these badges to clarify who has done what. For instance, in this paper that is about sleep disturbance, we can now see that the first co-author has been involved in the role of conceptualization, formal analysis, investigation, and so on. Now you might be thinking, oh great, so now we know who has done what. What's the ethical issue here? Well, it might be true that using these badges, we can clarify who has done what, but we still need to clarify what roles to specifically acknowledge. Remember the person in our thought experiment who said I drove everyone to the house of me? That task of driving was invisible when we were only thinking about cleaning. But in fact, without driving and without bringing everyone to the house, cleaning would have not happened. We have the same problem in research. A lot of tasks are invisible. For instance, tasks conducted by librarians are rarely mentioned in research publications. But in a lot of projects, they are indispensable to the conduct of research. So therefore, there is no badges for them because they are not mentioned in research publications. Another ethical complexity pertains to the duration and extent of contributions. In some of the projects, someone might be involved in the role of investigation for 10 years. Another person might be involved in the role of investigation for 10 days. Do both of them deserve to receive the investigation badge? Maybe, maybe not, but who should make that decision? Who should be in charge of making those decisions? Is it the person who has been involved in the project the longest? Is it the person who has more experience? Or is it the person who actually brought the money to the project? In my research, I look into these issues to improve the ethics of recognizing contributions in academic collaborations. To better understand this line of work, next time when you want to conduct a task or a chore with other people collaboratively, try to buy a bonus item and see whether you can actually give it to one of the people who's involved in the collaboration. My guess is that you would face tensions and disagreements. But don't worry, because these tensions and disagreements would inform you about what matters to other people when they're collaborating and would hopefully teach you something, the ethics of recognizing contributions. Thank you very much and I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the symposium.